I'm David Scalmani. I am the director of the Italian Cultural Institute in Cairo, Egypt. I cover the same position here in Belgrade, so I'm back to <laughs> where I've been uh, at least uh, until two, two months ago. Uh, but in my previous capacity, I, uh, I was a, a lecturer uh, of Italian language um, sent by the Italian government uh, through uh, different places in the world. So I had the opportunity to be involved in uh, different uh, national education systems in South Korea, Mexico, and so forth. And I've seen uh, the space of the student-centered approach growing in those 20 years. But some conditions have to be met. Um, and I speak first about responsibilities, a double responsibility. Um, successful student-centered approach is based on the fact the student is responsible for learning. He cannot shift the responsibility to someone else. He is responsible. That, that is the deep meaning of being centered on student. But at the same time, the teacher is responsible for facilitating the learning. So we, without those, those two responsibilities, I don't think we can go on with the student-centered approach. And of course, uh, the knowledge transmission paradigm is replaced by the competence, as Lisa said, learning paradigm founded on cooperative learning and inductive methods, we have discussed them about. Uh, they, they include a wide range of active methodologies, uh, inquiry-based learning, learning case-based case instruction, problem-based learning, and so forth. But they are basically derived from the theories of pragmatic pedagogy. And I would add the humanistic approach. The, the professor before from the Faculty of Arts, she uh, advocated for the presence of artists here in the panel, and I totally agree. I would add another, another suggestion for the next uh, conference. Uh, ask to uh, historian of pedagogy to be here, and a philosophy of education to be here. They have so many insights in what we are we have, we have been talking about. And uh, we, we've been talking about uh, the Leonardo case, and we, we said, well, it's not about creativity. So what is all about if it's not creativity? Because creativity is 24 hours, seven, we, we are all creative. Maybe we don't know, and we have to study more about the school that Leonardo attended. Hmm. Do you know which school attended Leonardo? It's the same school that was attended by Sandro Botticelli, Pietro Perugino, Domenico Ghirlandaio, Luca Signorelli. I mentioned, I think, four or five of the best artists, scientist artists, because the, that, that distinction was not clear at that time, of course. They all have been schooled by one master, Andrea del Verrocchio. So it has something to do with school, even for a genius, as we are usually uh, uh, defining those personality, which doesn't define anything. If, you, if we say that someone is a genius, we, we just give a pattern to them, but there's no explanation. On it. So history of pedagogy uh, teaches, us, she teaches us a lot of things. In the Italian tradition, we had in 21st century, Maria Montessori, up to Loris Malaguzzi, very much focused on the uh, primary education, even uh, kindergarten and so forth. But we can mention, of course, the French, the French uh, uh, tradition, uh, Celestin Frenet and others. A basic assumption of, of all those uh, uh, um, pedagogists is that the learner's mind is embedded in an individual body, which is actually a person, and was mentioned before by Professor Zucconi, the importance of uh, the person-centered uh, uh, education. And, and persons, uh, of course, are uh, uh, in relation uh, with the social dimensions. Uh, so parents, family, socialization issues, peer group, all those things that usually stays, stay out of the, of the classroom. And persons, persons have uh, several levels of needs, um, basic needs, uh, more developed needs, and, and I have uh, seen 
the presentation before mentioning human flourishing. And that's a need too, we have to take into account that. So that's the level of the intervention that the student-centered approach should, should reach. Um, student-centered education empowers the students to take ownership of what they learn by focusing on how the new knowledge solves the problems, solves problems or adds value. Instead of simply trying to hammer information into the child's mind and asking illegitimate questions, the teacher as facilitator presents the student with an issue and guides the class as they build the solution. Uh, illegitimate questions, that's a definition that I got from uh, Heinz von Furster. Uh, he was a scientist, cybernetics. He founded the second order cybernetics. And, uh, and I think illegitimate questions, uh, maybe the definition is, is very simple, uh, um, are questions of which we already know the answer. So probably 99% of the questions that have been, that have been raised in, in, the normal, in, a, in a normal classroom are illegitimate questions. And why are they illegitimate? Because they trivialize human beings. It's such a trivial thing to, for me to ask a question to a pupil, to a student, of which I already know the answer. It's totally demotivating. We are asking uh, to transform a human being into an input-output machine. No motivation in that. I, I don't find, and, and even more now, uh, we have an extended uh, knowledge base, very accessible. Why would we ask question whose, whose answer we already know? Uh, then, that's a student-centered approach. Ask only legitimate questions. Questions that we don't know exactly the answer. Big questions, we, we, have, we have seen that before the, the, the SDGs goals. They are all questions, we don't know the answer exactly, but we can build knowledge uh, using our resources, using our minds, using uh, uh, the person that uh, the, the classroom are, are made of. And um, at the, at, I'm speaking now about the Italian system, uh, which is, in the last 20 years, uh, been influenced by the European Union recommendation, uh, which have been focused uh, on uh, the competencies. And competencies, I think it's a good compromise, uh, uh, given the fact that the system, uh, they, we have national systems, of course, and we have to harmonize the system in the European Union. But the thing is, if we don't find a way to communicate to transfer the knowledge from one system to the other, it, it, it's going to be uh, uh, very complicated to, to go on at the European level. So competencies are uh, actually uh, uh, a, a clever way to overcome the problem of uh, non-transferable uh, knowledge. And, and we have also competencies as the end of process of education uh, based on, uh, of course, knowledge, skills, and attitudes. So the three levels uh, that, that compose the, the uh, education action as the European Union have seen it. One problem, Italian problem. Uh, the, the, the decision makers level is very well aware of the necessity to, ch to shift to the, to the competencies uh, based education. The teachers are not that, uh, are not so happy to accept uh, the, new, the new model and just uh, I've found a way, a very clever way, to walk around the suggestion, the recommendation of the European Union and the national, and the national authorities. What, did, what, what have they done? They have stick to their disciplinary uh, subject and they have just rewritten it in a competence-based formula so that they can teach as they are used to be, but they can show to the, uh, to the headmaster or to the supervisor that, that, they, can, that they have just, uh, 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 well, they have adjusted to, to what was uh, asked to them. Thank you very much.